Shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Apologies for being kind of late with this video. I think you guys have probably seen enough unboxings by now. I've been having a good deal of creative crises recently and thinking all of my videos are really crap. So I definitely have a good amount of thoughts about this new iPad Air and just like the new Apple ad that was released, we are going to use this as my only computer today because they say your next computer is not a computer. That's some clever copy. I really enjoy Apple ads, but we'll see how it stacks up to Sarah Peachy's day. Cause the one thing I can't do, and this is why the iPad has really served very specific niches for me. I could never really only use an iPad cause I video edit a lot and I don't want to turn in Resolve for LumaFusion yet. It's impressive, but it just ain't there. But today we're gonna do everything but video editing. <laughs> So usually my day starts pretty slow and honestly starts on other people's time. I should probably get better at this, but you know, phone calls. Writing out notes in OneNote, planning out a video in Notion, writing out to-dos and things. I actually really have a good flow of productivity apps on the iPad. Something though that has been annoying in the past is something as simple as video calls, which I do a lot. The era of Zoom calls are here. Sometimes I wish those could just be phone calls, but you know what, it's fine. <laughs> but on the iPad, I've had issues in the past over a year ago when I was trying to really use the iPad for more things. With Zoom, Google Meets, for some reason, you couldn't do the basic things like recording the phone call or sharing your screen. And now I am so pleased to see that both Zoom and Google Meets, you're allowed to share the screen. So if you have something you're demoing, presenting to people on the phone call, it works exactly like as if you were using a computer. That is fantastic. I know it sounds so basic, but sometimes apps um, kind of just lag behind when it comes to the iPad. I mean, look at Instagram, guys. We still don't have an iPad. Instagram app. And something that I didn't even know that was a feature on Zoom, but they added in a whiteboard feature, which comes in really handy if you have an Apple Pencil. Oh my gosh, I had no idea. So remember on the iPad Air, you only have one wide camera on the back. It's pretty much the same as last year's iPad Air. The biggest camera upgrade that you are getting is with that selfie camera right there. So now it's a 12 megapixel wide instead of a seven megapixel from last year. And they're introducing center stage. This means the camera moves with you as you are moving. Now, I think this is good for when you're FaceTiming family and friends and maybe another person comes in the frame. It's like, oh, hey, John, like say hi to my mom. But honestly, when it comes comes to like Zoom meetings and just normal stuff, I usually turn it off. Zoom makes it really easy to turn off, but other apps, not so much. It's really nice that we now have 5G on the new iPad Air. I actually did a lot of uh, thumbnail editing in the car from Austin uh, back to Fort Worth for a secret video that you guys might see next month. And usually I just hook up the hotspot from my phone uh, on my iPad Wi-Fi models just cause they're cheaper. But I will say something about just not worrying about that. Logging on wherever you are is actually extremely handy. The best part about using iPad is is well using the Apple Pencil. So if you're not a digital artist, hey, maybe you still use it for taking notes and OneNote or GoodNotes. So I think this iPad Air, it does sit at kind of an awkward price in between the iPad Pro and the Pro will probably get updated in the fall with the M2 chip, right? Something to keep in mind. But at 599 for the 64 gig model, I think this is really great for you students, note takers. Maybe you already have a real computer, but this is something that you can just take to class and having 64 gigs isn't that big of a deal because because you basically store all of your notes in the cloud anyways. I think that's where this 599 price tag is really great. However, if you are a digital artist of any kind and not having a ProMotion display on this iPad Air, um, it's going to be you know a 60 Hertz refresh rate. That does make the Apple Pencil just a little less responsive on the iPad screen. Hey, that ProMotion display on the Pros might be worth it for you if you're in Procreate. And drawing is your life, you're always in those apps and you need you know that extra 128 gigs of storage that's the starting on the iPad Pros, uh, starting at $7.99, that might make more sense for you. But students, more casual iPad users, I really don't think the 64 gigs will be that much of an issue. But when you start wanting to upgrade to the 256, that's when I'd be like, huh, maybe consider a pro or a refurbished pro. Okay, so it's time to go to the office and continue my day. And well, let's get into maybe some more creative apps. <laughs> Hey, creative apps, Lightroom, Photoshop. This is kind of like an app check for me because a couple years ago, I was severely disappointed in the state 
of apps, but they've gotten really good. I use Lightroom and Photoshop to edit my thumbnails all the time. And I'm just gonna kind of show you some of the tools in here to just get you started. And you might wanna hop into these again and, and give them a chance again. So I basically imported um, straight from my A7S, like 25 megabyte files. These are the files that you can see down here. Wow, look at my thumbnail faces. So great, Sarah. I'm actually gonna do some adjusting here before we head over to the presets. Masking has gotten easy and very quick. So we're gonna click the masking icon, press the plus button. The select sky feature is new if you're shooting outside and you just wanna edit the sky, so it'll automatically detect it pretty quick. But as you can tell, I'm gonna do select subject, it's thinking, the M1 is doing all of its things, perfect. And it selected me and the iPad. A lot of times I wanna stick out from the background, so I'll basically just brighten up what's in focus and I don't wanna brighten up the brick behind me. So let's do that real quick. And we'll add some sharpness. I want to add another mask and this time I'm just gonna do a brush I'm gonna just draw this on to my skin here because I don't want to get the other parts. And we're just gonna do the smooth skin feature so I can trick the people clicking into the video that I have the perfectest skin ever. So we'll go over here. We're gonna turn down the clarity. That's a little bit too much, right? I think that's good. Perfect, okay. I feel like this is in a good place to then go to my user presets, which basically come over from Lightroom. That's the one time where the cloud is good, woo. These are the Visco presets I have from a long time ago. They're just synced with my Lightroom, so they popped up here on the iPad app. And we're just gonna run through them. As you can see, they update pretty freaking quick. Um, the iPad is very responsive. That one looks nice. I will say I still enjoy this process better on my uh, computer because I can take the mouse and really hover over all of the presets and get a live preview very quick. Um, you know, it's different on the iPad because I have to physically click through all of these presets. So it's not as quick. Okay, and this is the part that I always do on my computer is I send it to Photoshop and then I send it back to Lightroom. And I wanna retain um, everything that I've done. I wanna stay in the apps. I don't want to have to export to a PNG and then import it into Photoshop. Um, I want to, you know, bridge in between the apps. And so as you can see now, there is a edit in Photoshop in Lightroom. It's going to send it to Photoshop. And I don't know if this is part of y'all's workflow, but it's part of mine on the computer. So it just feels familiar. It feels safe and it feels like a dang computer, like I'm using a computer, right? Okay, and now we're in Photoshop and it's not super stripped down like it used to. If you need to get to more settings, say you're like, hey, where's my magic eraser or whatever. You basically click on that setting and then do a second click and you'll get all of these settings that you're used to over in Photoshop. So we'll double tap here. You have the usual clone stamp but you also have the healing brush, you know, you have paint bucket. Okay, and before we actually start drawing, let's do a new layer and we're gonna draw on this layer so it's independent of the photo. So iPad review. Oh yeah, it looks so artsy. Hopefully some of you guys are artists. You were like, you were brought in by the thumbnail, right? Fantastic. So now you can see it's just in that layer, fantastic. And so the next thing that I'm gonna do is duplicate the photo. Go to the selection tool, select subject, clicked invert, so it just selects the background, delete the background, and then add an adjustment layer, up the exposure, and then click this button with the little arrow to where the adjustment layer only affects the layer underneath it. So it's only going to affect my person, nothing else, so it brightens me up once more. And then we send it to Lightroom. I actually did the healing brush on the iPad to get rid of Smudges, and then I just did a quick export to photos and boom, we, we have a thumbnail. Okay, so hopefully, you know, you learn something as well. Lightroom and Photoshop have gotten much better. They're adding features. Um, it was really watered down a couple years ago, but it's good to know that this part of my workflow, hey, I actually don't need a computer. The iPad can be my computer. I'm actually gonna hijack some of this time to let you know, hey, we've updated saradici.com and it looks pretty good. Um, we've updated our brand work to just look, I keep pressing Pressing the wrong button. We've updated our brand work page. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. Squarespace is such a great tool if you have a creative portfolio like me. I wanna make sure I put my best foot forward for any people who want to come and sponsor youtube.com slash saradici. They can watch a few examples and say, wow, I so see my company in a Sarah Peachy video. So if you're a photographer, designer, um, video maker, you don't have a website, well, you should check out that link in the description below, of course. And also we've updated my affiliate section. You can go and see all of the beautiful gear that I use in my videos. We update this regularly now. I had the iPad backwards. Hopefully none of you guys noticed that. 
Why, why did that work with the magnets? That's what I figured. Okay, Siri. And if you sell things online, oh my gosh, Squarespace is your one-stop shop for all of those things. It has so many great integrations with third parties like ShipStation and different payment methods, PayPal, Stripe, etc. And there are so many other tools at your disposal. Squarespace takes care of SEO, search engine optimization. So when people Google your business, hey, they will actually find you. A ton of great analytics tools. It updates you, hey, you have an extra 100 hits this week. You can set notifications actually on the phone app and it keeps you up to date with that email campaigns with beautiful templates that match the standard you know of your beautiful website and they also have tools like scheduling so I set this up on our rental website bookblanco.com where people can book photo video rental sessions at you know our physical place in Grapevine Texas and it was so easy to set up the clients can book how many ever hours they want and also can pay how they want insert a credit card via Stripe or pay via PayPal so if you have a creative portfolio or a business, an online shop. Squarespace has all of the tools that you could possibly need. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And if you want to get started today, you can sign up with my link, squarespace.com slash saradici to get 10% off your first purchase of a domain or website. <laughs>ipad as a real computer isn't necessarily my thing per se i would always take just a laptop a macbook a windows laptop anything over an ipad for everyday tasks the point is you can now do it things actually work well you can hook up a mouse you know there's tons of great accessories um, i will say the biggest really downside with the ipad air against the pro is the lack of thunderbolt when it comes to like productivity tasks because then you can't hook it up to like a thunderbolt display like this as a second uh you know screen but even though if you have the pro models with thunderbolt that's not still the best experience since it doesn't take up the full screen but just something to note you know remember you don't have face id but some people really enjoy touch id so you unlock it with your fingerprint but the point is with having the m1 in the ipad air is it's just fast like apps just Go. And then also, you know, gaming. This is Asphalt 9, one of the most CPU intensive games out there. It's on a top 10 list, okay? Graphics are good. Looks really good. Nice reflections. Got a Lotus. Oh! Give me that nitro. Skirt! Oh, God. Oh! Okay, just ran right into it. Man, this brings back the memes. Oh, God. I kid you not. Uh, playing Need for Speed on the PSP was my life. It was my life. I would play online, talk crap. Oh, look at that. I'm in freaking first place, y'all. I mean, you, you don't even have to steer in this game, so I better be in first place. So you guys probably already know by now, M1 fast, iPad Air, better, great, fantastic, um, but a few of the quirks, okay, because there are a few quirks. For some reason, uh, from the last iPad Air to this, they've changed the way the volume buttons work. So when you're in vertical orientation, it's just like normal. The top button turns up the volume, bottom button turns down. But the moment you turn it to the horizontal uh, place, the volume buttons switch. Now, I guess that makes sense when you're in the horizontal orientation that the right button turns up the volume and the left one turns down, but that means they're switched now. Now the bottom button is turning the volume up. That just, it trips me out. The other thing, and this is something that I've actually seen on Twitter a little bit, is the general build quality. Uh, whenever I'm like holding it and there's some, some weight on the back, it, it feels like it's affecting the display on the front. We have some footage of it. And then also when I'm drawing, I feel like I don't press down that hard, but there's definitely, it just feels like the screen is like flexing more than I'm used to. And this is the weird part. This is a weird part. It's kind of creaky, guys. Like it kind of just like creaks I don't know it doesn't like 
really affect anything yet, but it just feels weird and it's different. I'm not used to that on an iPad. Um, so the last thing, battery life, battery life, battery life. So I think this is the biggest thing that is truly holding back the iPad to being a computer other than having pro apps like Logic or Final Cut, of course. But I think a ton of people could use this day to day. Um, but the whole thing is that you have to bring your charger with you. Luckily it does charge pretty fast, but doing a full eight hour day of work on this thing, especially if you're using the magic keyboard, is just like not gonna be possible. So a few days ago, I got the opportunity to be in a car for three hours and I needed to edit a thumbnail. I purposefully did not bring my laptop, so I had to do it on this iPad Air. So I was in and out of Lightroom and Photoshop and I was also screen recording at the same time. And in little under two hours with 5G going, by the way, that was extremely handy. I was like looking up how to use things and certain shortcuts, but in a little under two hours, so an hour and uh, 50 minutes, it went from 49% down to 8%. And then today when I started this adventure of really only using the iPad, I was around 71% and I felt like it was going down pretty quick. So I screenshotted at 1111, make a wish. Um, I was basically at 57% and only two hours later of using this, I was doing less intensive tasks. So like OneNote, a little bit of Netflix and stuff like that. Um, so only two hours later, I fell to 16%. So maybe it's like these M1 MacBooks have spoiled us. I swear the M1 MacBook Air like runs on unicorn dust or something. The battery just never dies. So maybe we're spoiled with those computers and now we're just like, I expect you to last forever, but you don't have you know, the other half of a laptop that you can stick a battery in. A lot of people are like, well, hey, stick a battery in, you know, in the actual case, that would be great. But as is, this is already pretty heavy. The iPad standby battery is pretty bad. It's kind of annoying. I even did a test with this iPad Air off overnight with the Apple Pencil attached, and it lost 14% of its battery from 3 p.m. to 10 a.m. the next day. So uh, I guess the best thing you do is just make sure nothing is attached to your iPad overnight and it'll lose the least amount of battery, but battery drain is actually like a serious problem. And again, the biggest downside to using this as a proper computer and what I would love to see as the biggest improvement in the future. But guys, again, an iPad is an iPad. They've been great for a very long time so I'm almost like going out of my way to find these problems and they are real if you're using it as a real computer but let me know what you guys think like this video hit the subscribe button down below for new videos every single week and hey check out my Squarespace link to build your beautiful website or if you need a domain okay stay peachy bye